Hey guys, Jake here, coming at you with another math problem today. The last couple of videos I've talked about chain rule versus product rule, and today what I want to show you is how to combine those and use both of them to find the derivative of a single function. So we're going to be going over this example here, which is going to require the use of both product rule and chain rule to find its derivative. Just like I've touched on in the last couple of videos, I'm going to be showing you kind of how this is explained within the book, The Calculus Lifesaver by Adrian Banner. Um, it's a great, great book to help kind of explain a lot of calculus topics. I recommend checking that out. There's a link in the description so you can go look at that. It's a very affordable book, so highly recommend checking it out. But what we're going to go over here is finding the derivative of this function, y equals the natural log of sine x times 3x squared plus 17x. When you look at a function like this and you are trying to find its derivative, you, you know, you kind of have to figure out the order of how you're going to apply things. So what I mean by that is if we think about order of operations, you know, basically if we were to plug in some value for X, what order would we have to apply these different functions to that X value in order to get what the value of this whole thing would be? So what I mean by that is that let's say we put an X in here, here, and here. Based on order of operations, first we would start inside parentheses. So first we would figure out the sign of that X value. And then we would take the natural log of whatever that was, and that would give us this whole term here. And then we would multiply it by this whole thing that's in the parentheses over here. So over here, we would be figuring out what this 3x squared plus 17x is within the parentheses. And then that whole thing would be multiplied by this whole thing. So by the order of operations, the multiplication of this whole function here and this whole function here would be the very last thing you do. So since that would be the last thing that we would do when we're taking the derivative, those are going to be kind of our biggest chunks that we need to deal with first. So we kind of want to think about order of operations and then work backwards from there. So since this multiplication is the last thing we would do if we were just simply plugging in an X value into this function, that's the first kind of breakdown that we need to deal with when finding the derivative of this whole function. So since the first thing we're dealing with is the product of this whole piece times this whole piece, we're gonna to have to use the product rule first. So doing that, let's just say that this is our function u and this is our function v, and we're gonna apply the product rule. So the product rule says the derivative of this whole thing, so y prime is gonna be the derivative of u with respect to x times v plus u times the derivative of v with respect to x. So let's think about what that would, would leave us with. Basically, we would take the derivative of this piece here with respect to x. So the derivative with respect to x of natural log of sine of x times v, so times this whole thing. And then we would add plus u, so plus this whole thing, times the derivative of v, so times this whole term. So times d dx of 3x squared plus 17x. So the product rule tells us that the derivative of this function is the derivative of this piece here times this piece here without taking the derivative plus this piece here times the derivative of this other piece. So finding the derivative of 3x squared plus 17x is pretty straightforward. You really just need to apply the power rule for that. The ln of sine of x doesn't require any additional steps. The 3x squared plus 17x doesn't require any additional steps. But let's think about this piece here, the derivative of ln of sine of x. That is a composite function, right? We have this sine of x essentially being plugged into the natural log of x. So if we think about decomposing this composite function, our kind of inner function would be this sine x, and our outer function that we're plugging that inner function into would just be natural log of x. So finding just this single piece here is going to require the use of the chain rule. So let's think about that as kind of its own separate thing here for a second. If we want to find the derivative with respect to x of natural log of sine of x, we want to think of this as a composite function, which basically means we want to figure out our inner function. So let's just make this is essentially our inner function. So now let's say, let's make the substitution w equals our inner function. 
So I discussed this method in a video that I made last week. Uh, there's a link here that you can check that out. But this is the same method that's described in that calculus lifesaver book I mentioned. So basically what it says to do is pick your inner function. So figure out what your inner function is. Designate that as some other letter. So let's just call it W. So now we're going to find the derivative of natural log of W, but we're going to do it with respect to W instead of X. So essentially the thought here is when we're decomposing this, we're trying to find the derivative of this thing with respect to X. We can instead break that down into the derivative of that thing with respect to W and then multiply that by the derivative of whatever W is with respect to X. So figuring out the derivative of this outer piece here with respect to W, then we're gonna multiply that by the derivative of this W function with respect to X. So the derivative of ln of W is just gonna be one over W. So we'll say dy dw is just one over w. And then the derivative of w with respect to x, that's just the derivative of this function with respect to x. The derivative of sine x is cosine x. So this dw dx piece is just gonna be cosine x. But see, now the weird thing is we have a w and an x. So now what we can do is take this w and plug it back in for w here and that'll give us the derivative of this whole thing with respect to x. So doing that would give us 1 over sine x times cosine x, which is the same as cosine x over sine x. So cosine x over sine x is the derivative of natural log of sine of x. So now, knowing that, we can take this and plug that in here for what it asks for the derivative with respect to x of natural log of sine of x, right? So we know this piece here is now just gonna be cosine x over sine of x. So we'll make that substitution. And then the only other piece we need to figure out is the derivative of 3x squared plus 17x, which using power rule, we could just bring the two down in front, making this a six, lower the power by one, so it would just be 6x, and then the derivative of 17x is just 17. So this piece here is 6x plus 17. So we can replace this with that. And now we've figured out our entire derivative. So we could simplify this by kind of distributing things throughout the parentheses, but it's not really necessary. Essentially the full derivative of this original function after applying both product rule and chain rule is just gonna be cosine x over sine of x times 3x squared plus 17x plus the natural log of sine of x times 6x plus 17. And make sure you're putting parentheses around these pieces so that you're properly distributing and multiplying this entire thing times this entire thing as well as this entire thing times this entire thing. And doing that would give you your derivative of this original function that we started out with. So like I said, go check out that Calculus Lifesaver book. The link is in the description. It's a great book. It's very affordable. I highly recommend it. And please, if you like this video and found it helpful, give it a like, subscribe to the channel. It's a great way to help support the channel so I can keep making more videos like this. Thanks and see you next time.